<laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one who's ever touched a doorknob and been on the receiving end of a painful zap or pull my clothes out of the dryer only to find my socks clinging to my sweaters. Well, it's no big secret that static electricity is the culprit, but what many of us don't know is how that nuisance is likely to affect even our simplest DIY repairs. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today I'm going to give you a brief lesson on ESD. No, it's not a venereal disease. It stands for electrostatic discharge. If you're new to electronics repair, you might not be aware of proper ESD safety procedures or why discharging static electricity is necessary to the safety of your device. Basically, the smaller the components in your device are, the more sensitive they are to static electricity. And even though you might not feel a zap the way you would when you touch a doorknob, it doesn't mean that static isn't being transferred from your body to your device. So let's start with the basics. Before you begin any electronics repair, unplug your device. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove any rings, bracelets, or watches from your fingers and wrists. Though your calculator watch might look super cool, it has no place next to your naked electronics. Now for the not so obvious stuff. You're going to start by grounding your workstation by laying down an anti-static mat and connecting its wire lead to the nearest metal component of the table that you're working on. The mat is designed to reduce static buildup while you're doing your repair, and it makes a nice, clean, even surface to work on. Next, you're going to ground yourself using an anti-static wrist strap. If you've got your mat laid out already, all you've got to do is connect the wire lead to the mat. And even if you don't feel staticky, just scooting your butt around in your chair can generate enough zap to cook your gizmo. So by grounding yourself with the anti-static wrist strap, you're preventing your own zap from transferring to your gadget. It's easy and it's geek chic. Finally, when performing your repair, keep your parts in the pink or silver bags that they came in until you're ready to use them. Also, I'd recommend using ESD safe tools. These tools don't discharge electricity the way the mat and the strap will, but they don't build up a charge of their own while you're using them. Non-ESD safe tools naturally build up a charge and then easily transfer that zap to fragile gizmos. Keep your parts and your tools on the anti-static mat while you're working and you're good to go. Of course, you can find all of the tools that I mentioned and many, many more at ifixit.com. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the latest teardowns and repair videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash ifixit. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.